Hey, welcome to the Backwoods Gourmet. Today we're going to unbox, review, and use a great product that's going to help you out when you're camping. So stay tuned. So if you watched any of our uh, later videos here and follow us along here on YouTube, which I wish you would, and if you're not following us along, please smash that subscribe button right down there. And don't forget to turn on and click the little bell and turn on your notifications because, you know, if you don't do that, YouTube may or may not uh, notify you of new content on this channel. But that being said, um, you know, some of our later videos, especially our camping videos here in the last few years, we've been using a, uh, a power bank, basically a, a you know, it's like a generator, but it doesn't have an engine. That's what we're going to be reviewing today. And I'm going to show you how it works, show you a few features of it, and show you how we use it when we're out camping. So what we have here today is a very nice uh, power bank product was sent to us for to do a review. And believe me, um, just because someone sends me a product for their review, doesn't mean I'm going to be all guns and roses about it. All right. I uh, recently had a, a couple of products that came in touting themselves as a high capacity power bank and they were the size of a cell phone. Did they work? Yes, they did. But not really um, anything that we could use and they're kind of ticked off that we didn't do a review on it. So anything that comes to me and I do a review on, we're going to do a full review and I'm going to tell you whether it's good, bad or ugly. So very well packaged, very big foam in it, claim our warranty is right on the front of it. So let's start digging into this box and see what's all inside. Okay, so right on top is the packet of information. There's their QR code and a pretty thick book on um, the unit. So we'll go through that again. Looks like it's in several different languages. That's why it's so thick. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll dig into that in a minute and we'll give you some of the specs on this guy. So over here I see that seems to have an accessory bag right here. Something I didn't really get with my Blue Eddy. I do have a Blue Eddy. You might, if you guys follow, you know, you, you see that on our uh, our Smoky Mountains trip. And that is a nice bag for your cords, okay? There's our cords right there. So nice carrying case or, you know, storage case for your cords. And that's a nice touch. So let's dig on into it and take this top piece of foam out of here. And um, there's the unit nestled down inside there. Okay. I noticed that it is a little smaller than my Blue Eddy is in uh, overall dimensions. It doesn't seem to be any lighter, however. Let's set the box aside. And uh, so there's the unit right there. It is good looking piece of equipment and I like the fact that it has these these covers there seem to be like rubber covers that cover your outlets up right there so let's dig into the um, a, a close look at it and then we're gonna plug it up and charge it for the first time all right, so here's the front of the unit. We have a 12 volt, you know, like cigarette lighter plug, which most of these do have. You can put your pod in there if you have, or your laptop um, cord to run that. And basically that's what our biggest thing we use these for in the field is running our electronics, our phones, our cameras. Obviously, you know, we can't bring content to you if we don't have a way to keep our cameras charged so there's two 110 outlets and that says right there that it's 600 watts uh, that's pretty comparable to the Blue Eddy we have and then I have uh, two USB C's at 100 and two USB A's at 18 watts on the front we have a light 
and I'm assuming that's the power button right there. Uh, also, it has the wireless charge feature on top for your phones. We'll check that out once we get it fully charged. And um, on the sides here, looks like we have a little door that can open up. Let's see if I can get that open without a tool. I got quite that big of a flap on it, but let's get it. grab that. Okay, so there's a reset button and places to plug our cords in under a protective door on there. Nothing on that side, nothing on that side. So let's go ahead and uh, plug her up to the charger and get it fully charged. Most of these things only come to you. I mean, obviously we just took it out of the box. It's gonna be partially charged, but not fully charged. So one of the reasons I'm bringing you this content on these type of battery banks, you know, and then that's the general term, battery banks. Um, this one is maybe more set up for solar than it is for camping and so on. Um, I'm kind of disappointed in the fact that there's no way to charge it via your vehicle. Okay, unless you have a AC output in your vehicle, which most new vehicles do that, do have an AC output. Uh, mine doesn't, even though it's newer, it's a Toyota Tundra. Um, the only two options you're given for charging this unit is A, via solar cable, which um, I'm planning to try to get uh, some solar panels that we can test this feature out or via AC. There's no DC charger that can plug into your vehicle, you know, cigarette lighter port or anything like that, uh, AC and or solar on this particular unit. But hey, everybody in this country should have some sort of backup power, at least even temporary. You know, here in Florida, we got the hurricanes, we got bad thunderstorms all, all, all the entire summer that's liable to knock the power out here at any minute. Uh, having one of these around is a real lifesaver. I'm gonna show you a couple things that we use uh, here at the Backwoods Gourmet Channel, temporary lighting. Um, I've actually, on my, my previous unit, I've actually ran fans at night when we had a prolonged power outage so I, just so I could go to sleep and be a little bit cool. But at any rate, anywhere in the country you live, up north you're gonna have blizzards, uh, ice storms, stuff like that. Uh, you know, out west, you're gonna have wildfires, earthquakes, things like that. Could interrupt your power supply. And of course, all around the Gulf Coast, right here where we are, and Atlantic Coast, you could have a hurricane anytime during the summer. Having one of these units around is gonna be a great, great addition to your equipment to have as emergency backup at your house. So I went ahead and plugged the unit into AC and we're trying to figure out how to get the display to come back on because that just went away. Plug it back in again. Alright. That's telling me that it is 0% charged. So this one came completely discharged. Right here it says I got 118, 100 to 115 watt, 120 watt input and now it is actually charging and we'll see how long it takes i'll be back to you all right i want to go ahead and give it the coffee the coffee maker test um here's my little five cup coffee maker i got five cups of water in there i'm gonna hit brew we're 99 percent charged I'll go ahead see if we can get it to come on uh, mm. I think I gotta turn it on here. Okay, turn it on there. All right, AC power is on. I'm gonna hit brew. We'll watch how many watts this pulls because I've selected this coffee maker because it pulls less than 600 watts. You hear the fan kick on in the power bank? That's pretty typical of all these that I've tested so far keep that thing cool uh, 
and the number I'm watching is this percent charge number. Okay, so we finished brewing our hot water over there. Ooh, that joke was hot. And we only used a little more than 25% of the capacity of the power bank. That's pretty good. Um, my Blue Eddy is a larger case than this, and it uses about half of its power to do the same thing on this exact same machine. So that was pretty good for the capacity. Now we're going to check out a couple other parts of the, of the power bank. Um, let's go ahead and turn the AC outlets off. We don't need those anymore. These little covers they give here for you, they're not waterproof or nothing. They're kind of, I don't understand the purpose of them, but we're going to check out the, the uh, wireless phone charging capacity. Of course, this is just... Uh, your USBs there and we got some lights and stuff that we can run off these USBs uh, that we use our, our portable power brakes for when we're camping all the time that's my my main lighting for underneath our canopy is some LEDs that run off of those USBs so let me grab my phone and we'll check out the wireless charge option right, I'm gonna go ahead and put my phone on there I did press the USB button and I'll have to get you a better camera angle there you see that just um, popped up the icon there so as you can see right here that my wireless charge icon is lit and it is charging it is only taking right now two watts power to operate that there you go seems to be working just fine on charging the phone so we're gonna go ahead at this point I'm just gonna go ahead under this little door on the side here you see this door they got a flap and under here is where the cord plugs in somewhere hard for me to hold the camera and do this at the same time so the only disappointing thing to me is that there's no there's also a reset button in there if it uh, kicks off you overload it or whatever but now you can see that the it's now displaying input wattage 327 and it's recharging So overall, with this review, I was just done here today. We got some high points and some low points. Uh, we'll start with the high points on this on this all powers high capacity power bank. Uh, the performance in the AC mode there was really really good. Okay, compared to some of the other ones I've tested, like I said, uh, same you know. Uh, kind of wattage you know kind of keeping all level apples to apples um, units that I've tested the battery did do really really well compared to some of the other ones I've tested some of the uh, that that seemed to be a great feature it does have the light like most of the other ones does has the AC outputs the the USB outputs the DC the uh, you know serrate lighter type output I guess you can actually use that also to jump start your vehicle if you have the proper cord which didn't come with it and I'm sure you can get that somewhere but it does have a feature to jump start your vehicle if your vehicle's dead or whatever I guess using that cigarette lighter type uh, old type DC cord plug that in your cigarette lighter plug the other end into the power bank jump your vehicle off help charge your battery up that way because it uh, there's got a little icon on there all right uh, the next thing is that this has that most of the other ones I've tested does not have is Bluetooth capability to hook to an app to your phone that ain't a big deal to me I you know I'm Gen X all the way I don't need a phone to do everything in my life but you know if you're one of those guys that loves to use your phone to control everything just download the app using the QR code right in the user's manual 
and you can get all the information from the unit, turn it on and off and make all the settings and switch everything off and on with your phone. I just walk over like hit the button. So some of the features that I was seen on the unit are the you know options they have that I uh, didn't really understand was the USB-C output it, with the USB-C jack. Now that may be something that's popular overseas from the United States, but I hardly ever see anything or even see a cord that's USB-C to USB-C like everything is now. And it has a pretty high output for those jacks, but I just don't see them used here in the US. So talking about those jacks, it only has two USB-A jacks, which just about everything you buy here in the US has, comes with a USB-A jack to plug in to be charged, laptops, all your cell phones, mobile devices, tablets, all those kind of things that you might want to charge with it are going to have a USB-A, which it only has two. I really wish they would have, uh, instead of the USB-C's, uh, which are two, they would have given you four USB-A's, that way you could charge multiple devices. Um, that being said, the wireless charger on top of the unit works very similar to the other units that I've reviewed. It seems to work okay. Um, so now, let's get to the things I didn't really like about the unit, and there's only a couple. So here are the downsides of this particular unit, the all powers high capacity power bank. No way to charge it in your vehicle from your standard cigarette lighter plug that you would have uh, if you have an older vehicle. Um, no way to charge it while you're going down the road. And even if you have a newer, newer vehicle, you do need to check what your output, maximum output is on your AC plug in your new, newer vehicles because you can see when we charge that thing up using the AC plug it's pulling a little bit uh, a little bit more than 300 watts a lot of even your new vehicles are going to have a limit to how much that inverter can supply to that AC plug to charge a unit the other thing is the the little door that covers up where you plug it in to the AC and for your reset button and your your solar power cable connection. When you lift that thing up, you can't see what you're doing under there. You might see me struggling that with that a little bit. So thanks for watching the Backwoods Gourmet and our review of the All Powers High Capacity Power Paint. If you want to see more outdoor related product review videos, they're going to be right over there. And please. Hit that subscribe button right over there to see more content from our channel. We'll see you next time.